Welcome to the Northwest Ohio Spotlight in Education. Personalized Learning in Action. Featuring Mr. Patch, Fort Recovery Middle School Social Studies teacher. What is personalized learning? Well, students make daily decisions about their learning experiences, how they will create and apply knowledge, and how they will demonstrate their learning. Assessment is meaningful, positive, and an empowering learning experience for students that yields timely, relevant, and actionable evidence. Support. Students receive timely, differentiated support based on their individual learning needs. Mastery is greater than seat time, meaning students progress based on evidence of mastery or competency, not just their seat time. Additionally, students learn actively using different pathways and varied pacing. Strategies to ensure equity are embedded in the culture and rigorous common expectations for learning are explicit, transparent, measurable, and transferable. Around a year ago, Mr. Patch started on a journey to transform his classroom and teaching style to a more student-centered, mastery-based instructional model that leverages technology to foster human connection, authentic learning, and social-emotional growth. Mr. Patch begins his class with a student choice attendance activity. It's something as simple as asking students what cereal or cookies they prefer. This is a simple activity to learn more about your students and they learn more about their peers and teachers as well. At the end of each subject, the students enjoy their choices. Mr. Patch brought in cookies for the class when they completed all the cookie choices. Hanging in front of the classroom are each class's logos or mascots. The students collectively created their name and logos. A few of the names are Patch's People, War Dogs, and Patch's Patriots. We started off the class with what's called a do now, and it's basically a social emotional learning kind of a check in for the students to basically, uh, one, it's goal oriented, so they write down goals so they have to learn how to uh, create goals for themselves. Uh, learning time management to go along with that as well. Um, and then they can decide at the end of the day if they reach those goals or not and maybe what held them back from reaching those goals or what how why were they able to accomplish those goals so it kind of puts some responsibility on them um, and then the other part they have emojis because that's kind of a new thing for kids trying to tie that into where they can pick an emoji on how they're feeling for the day and then i go through those and just briefly scan those as they fill those in and that's kind of how we start class off so that way I know if someone's having a great day or a bad day or something where I need to maybe direct my attention to them right away. If they put a mad emoji then I know at that point that they're probably not really going to get a lot of learning done because something for them is, is not clicking well to where emotionally they're kind of something else is taking up their time. And so I need to figure that out with them uh, on how I can help them out. And then once we can get that figured out, then they can get into learning. So that's kind of ties into the emotional part and learning and the visualization part of it. So I can, as a teacher, kind of meet their needs from an emotional standpoint before we can get into the academic part because the academic part is not gonna happen if the emotional part is not tied into that. So this is a great check-in. Also at the bottom of that, they have something they want to tell me. So kids will say, hey, we have a game tonight. And like one of the students came up earlier today and said, hey, did you notice my check-in? Um, you know, they were hungry, they were starving. And so they, they put on their have snacks in there in the cabinet. They said, hey, could I have one of those snacks? I'm really hungry. So at, at that point, I, they, I allowed them to go to the cabinet to grab a snack because for them, they wasn't probably going to get a lot of learning done because they were more focused on their hunger than anything else. So at that point, hey, go grab a snack. You can help yourself out of there. I have those for them. So then they could get back to the learning part, which she did do because she took care of her needs. And her need at that time was not really doing schoolwork. It was to satisfy her hunger. So go ahead and go do that. I had another student who wrote on there, hey, I have a game tonight, so you're going to come to the game. So then I usually always I respond to every one of those kids. Um, that way they know I'm reading their stuff and then they can you know, share personal things with me that I get to know about them, they get to know about me. We make those connections and that makes things go easier in class. And it also helps because I have less discipline problems because of that, because of those connections that we create during this do now. So. After attendance, Mr. Patch engages students in a whole class discussion on their learning objectives. This particular lesson is over life in the early American colonies. Mr. Patch asks students a series of questions encouraging the connection to the big picture. The king does, and they eventually start paying for this through taxation. And then for those that were in D.C., you saw on the back of the license plates in Washington, D.C., what did it say? No yeah, no taxation without representation. Do you guys know why it says that in Washington, D.C.? Because they have no say in government. Yeah. They're not a state, right? And our government today 
only states and represented except for Washington DC right so they could have representation they get to sub on, serve on subcommittees but they don't actually have a vote remember the colonists were they being taxed prior to the king starts taxing them were they taxed prior to this students begin their work some students work independently some with a partner and others in small and larger groups Desks and tables are scattered around the room with some students at tables, desks, and on the floor in the hallway. Mr. Patch reminds the students of their do nows and must do's and rotates around the room to engage students and help clarify understanding. To me, to me education is kind of different than what it was set up to be. You know, we, we set up as the teacher-centered classroom where the teacher has all the answers and they're the ones who has kind of the locking key to information. And, and here it's not that case. You know, students are the ones who are really in charge of their learning and responsible for their learning. They help each other out. Uh, they provide answers. And we have an expert wall back here to where if I'm busy talking to a student one-on-one, -on -one, that they can go to other people to figure out since they've already mastered a, a subject, you know, who's, who's uh, kind of knows the answers to those things. And so because of that, they can go to those other students and you can facilitate collaboration better, which happens often in here. Um, collaboration happens in here more freely than uh, it would in a whole class lesson because kids are afraid to get wrong answers. They're afraid to look stupid in front of their peers. And when it's individualized, you can go and grab someone else and kind of quiz each other. Students are categorized on the tracker to be behind pace, on pace, ahead of pace, revise, or done. Learning objectives with QR codes are posted at the front of the classroom for students to scan for mastery checks. Mr. Patch utilizes Google Classroom as his class LMS. There's a lot of structure, but there isn't structure. There's a lot of freedoms and choices. And again, you're giving the students that responsibility to make those choices, which is ultimately what we want to do. You know, we want to teach content at the same time. We want to teach them how to be learners. We want to teach them responsibility. So they kind of have their own maker space in here where they're, if they're on the floor or on one side of the room, they're watching videos. If they're in the back of the room, they're doing mastery checks where they know they can't be talking to other students. We do have um, collaboration areas as well. So the students, you know, there is some flexibility, there's some freedom, but at the same time there is some structure. And I, I like it because it's, it's not just that teacher-centered part where I got to be able to give up some of that control and they got to be able to have some of that responsibility and we're really teaching them and empowering them to be in charge of their self. I'm Allie. I'm Kendall. And we're at Fort Recovery Middle School, seventh grade, Mr. Patch's world history class. It's kind of like self-pacing, which means that you don't have to wait on the kids that are like behind pace. You can kind of do your own thing, and then if you plan out your time, you can have like weeks to do your project rather than having like two days and scrambling to get it done, like within the last two days. But then in other classes, you like will work with the class, and it's like harder because the teachers like stand up there and it might take like three days to get something done rather than in a self-pacing class. If you're a work ahead of pace, it can take you like one day to get like three lessons done, so. Um, in other classes, you have homework. This class, you do not have homework unless you don't finish something. I prefer to do it at home sometimes just to be ahead because as Kendall said, if you're ahead, we have a project every unit that we learn. So right now we have a project about Rome and like what they made. I like Mr. Patch's class better 100% than other classes because you can do your own thing and you don't have to like waste your time like sitting there like zoning out in and out like listening to the teacher go on and on and on when you can do your own thing. His videos are nice because he explains to you everything and he doesn't give you the answers. He says that Sometimes you have to go into the book and like read because some kids in our class don't read, but we've gotten better at reading now, but. I actually don't watch the videos. I only read because mm -hmm. I learn better by reading out of the book and I asked Mr. Patch if I can read on my own and he said, yeah, that's fine if you learn better that way and I do and I still pass the mastery checks with 100%. Oh, um, so we do a challenge at the 8th grade that the class that can get the most, like, lessons done, like the class period that can get the most lessons done, gets to make a TikTok with Mr. Patch on his channel. It does make me more interested in, like, the topic that we're learning about, but since I've already read a lot about the Roman and Greek mythology, it's kind of easier, but... Yeah, last year I had we would read out the book as a class, and I'd always read because I was the one that liked to read. 
So it's a break on me and my voice because during the winter it got kind of hard. So the prep time is all up front. Um, it's actually kind of like a backwards planning. It's similar to like a flipped classroom um, to where you start with the end in mind. So the end is called mastery checks and that's really what you want the kids to know. So every mastery check is tied into the state standards. And then uh, you go through that first and then you'll create a video. So then the blended learning part of it is I put all my lectures on videos. So that way the students are watching videos then it ties into self-pacing so as they can watch the videos, complete the mastery checks as they proceed uh, on their own pace. All right, so this is where we keep our mastery checks at. And so this is uh, when the students complete a lesson, they'll come over and grab one of those. And then on each of the folders, there's check-in, answer uh, key, and also a guided notes, answer key. So that way uh, the check-in is kind of like a practice. Um, so when they feel like they've read the material, they watched the video, did the guided notes, they can check their guided notes out for themselves uh, and see if they have all the correct answers there. It's kind of like a study guide. And then they take a practice quiz called a check-in. If they score well on that, then they get a proceed on to the mastery check. It shows that they are ready and prepared. Uh, hi, I'm Isaac. I'm an eighth grader and I'm in Mr. Patch's class. And uh, one thing that I like about the class is that it's self-paced. Um, it has because usually I, I like to work a little faster than some other kids do. So I like that I'm able to have that freedom and like if I want to, I can work ahead or I can do it at my own pace, which is pretty nice. Um, I also like that he has mastery checks and not just big tests. So I don't have to study for one big thing. I can kind of study for like different smaller things along the way, which is kind of nice. I like that you have the choice of working in groups or not because I know some kids like working in groups and then some kids don't like working in groups. So it's nice that you at least have the choice. I like working by myself, but I know some friends that like working in groups, so it can kind of go both ways. I like it more than other classes for sure. It does free me up for in class, and so I get to spend my time in class really meeting the needs of each student based on where they're at through our progress tracker. Um, if those are behind pace, I can spend, you know, figure out why they're behind pace and what I can do to help them out. Those that are ahead of pace, I don't have to spend as much time because they are getting it and understanding it. They don't really need my attention as much. So. so as a teacher, it's really hard to reach every type of learner, every level of, uh, of student in here in one lesson, in one day. And this allows you to do that. It gives you that flexibility to reach the top level and to the lower level kids and really individualize that instruction to each individual student, which is, for me, it's always been really hard to do. You can do it over a unit, you can do it once in a while, but to do it every single lesson, every single day, this allows you to do that. And you can have a chance to reach those students that way they don't become frustrated and it allows them to enjoy class a little bit. So they really feel empowered through their own learning because it's their learning, they're responsible for it. And, and teacher-centered, I'm the one who's in charge of all that stuff. And so you have your upper, upper your middle, and your lower level paced kids. And in here, where it's self-paced, I'm, I'm not holding those upper level kids back. They don't become frustrated and bored out of their mind. The lower level kids are not feeling rushed because if they're trying to keep up with the average or higher level kids. And so you lose those kids as well. And in this type of classroom, you really are able to reach everyone, the upper, the lower, and the slower level kid, the slower pace kids, I should say. Um, and so they also have those freedoms to have those collaborations uh, with each other. And you can really see that in class where every kid is really participating because it is their own learning. It's, I'm not in charge of it for them. Hi, I'm Brian and I'm in eighth grade and I am in U.S. World History. And one thing about Mr. Patchett's classroom that I really like is that it's individual and you get to learn at your own pace. And that's very different than other classes because in other classes we have to learn with the rest of our peers. So it's just a very different experience than other classrooms. I've learned more about my classmates because we get to collaborate on different things like the checkpoints and uh, the guided notes, we get to collaborate and work together. So that is very uh, important. So with the videos too, um, I don't edit those things at all, just because it would take too much time uh, to edit those. But also it gives them a chance to see that you don't have to be perfect, that there's no such thing as perfect, that you can try to you know, obviously get better each time. And so my day one video to my day now video, which I've been doing this almost a year, Christmas break, 
has improved tremendously. I found different features. I've added things to it. But it also teaches them that it's okay to make mistakes, to learn from those and move on. And that's really growth mindset, that idea, which is what we talk about in here as well. It allows them to kind of grow maybe a little faster this way because they are in charge of themselves. They are leaders. It does cut down on a lot of discipline problems, uh, I think, as well as a teacher because, one, I have that flexibility. I'm not in charge of one thing. I can kind of monitor and flow myself, whatever. So there's a lot of advantages to it. One of those would be the connections I get to make with the students, you know, in this time of need, a day where a lot of teachers leave the profession because of frustration and all that. For me, I think it really is emphasizes why you got into teaching anyway, and, that, and that's to build those relationships and be with those students. And so it frees up my time in class where I can work with students one-on-one and really meet every single kid's needs. Uh, OTES 2.0 ties in perfect to this. Every single thing in OTES lines up with this kind of function of class. And so um, those connections and meeting, you know, the variety of needs in the classroom is really hard, but this allows it to, you to do that because you get to have those one-on-one -on -one times and developments and spend times working with those kids who are struggling a little bit in class. It's just because I saw such good results in my students. Um, you know, as far as testing goes, as far as just the overall love of history wanting to be in here, but also the content knowledge they were gaining. And so for me as a teacher, I, I took that plunge anyway, knowing that it was a lot of work and it does kind of cut down on your free time outside. Um, but the idea is I see such great rewards for them that I wanted to do that. Um, and I'll never go back to traditional teaching uh, ever again just because of this. I hope you came away with some tools, resources, information that you can use as an educator in your classroom building or district. I am a personalized learning specialist working for Mercer County ESC and available to teachers in Northwest Ohio as a resource and to support and facilitate all your personalized learning needs. Thank you.